Hello everybody, I am Hudson. I am a sophomore at Oka University and this is my method to keep track of everything I've done as sitting abroad in Japan at Kansai Gara University. Everything I've done, everything I will do, and hopefully inspire someone else to study abroad because you should do it. Not because you want to, but because I'm telling you to. Hi, today is Sunday at approximately 8 o'clock. I'm recording now because I don't want to do it later. So, we've got four days that I have to go over since last time, which is Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, thankfully, it's not crazy. Unlike tomorrow, which I would test, which is part of the reason why I have this thing with me. But it'll be fine, as long as I continue to read over it and remember that the negative forms of words are difficult. Because it adds like another extra six syllables for every negative and past tense adjective. Adjectives have tenses now. Which is an interesting concept. It's like, Grant, I guess it happens in English too. It's like, oh, it was good looking, or it was funny, or it was interesting. Or like it wasn't interesting, but also now instead of adding different words and negative words, they now have negative prefixes or past negative prefixes. And it's a whole different other argument, all the other set problems. <laughs> but it's cool, we're having fun. This is like the first class I've genuinely had. Okay, first class. This is one of the few classes I've genuinely interested in uh, and actually enjoyed learning about. So that's a plus. But, uh, on other notes, I had Thursday's class, which was a shocking success, actually. It was delicious because we made, not only did we finish up with the other uh, fish thing that we served on Tuesday, but we also had um, tamakayaki. Tamaka, give me a second. Tama something. It starts with a T and it's not takoyaki or takoyaki because takoyaki is gross. It's a little dough ball that has squid or octopus inside and that's nasty. But tamagoyaki is a sweet egg that's rolled. So it's like a little, it's like a, it's literally an egg roll. But then it's mixed with sugar and a little bit of soy sauce, and it's rolled and it's cooked. So it has you have like layers to it, which is interesting. And the method of, of actually creating it is a lot of fun too. So hopefully I'm going to be able to try it again soon. Maybe not in class, or I'll, I'll try to figure out a way to do it on my own. I would eat tamagotchi kind of like mold, like a uh, like a cookie cutter, but for eggs. I'll find one. Or I can just find the pan. There's a the pan is actually really funky too. It's called a um tamago pan. Oh tamago yaki. I'm guessing egg is yaki. Or tamago is egg. Heat and oil the tamago pan. Regardless, it is a fun little dish that is really simple. It takes less than five minutes. And all it was was laying down a big kind of blanket of egg, thin blanket of egg on the bottom of the, of the pan, rolling that up, kind of Twinkie style, pushing it toward the back of the pan, putting another layer around of egg, rolling that up when it was cooked, pushing it back, another layer, whatever, until you, have, you know, use all your egg. And it's a nice little sweet kind of egg. It tastes like a little breakfast roll, and it's it's actually quite filling. We had that, we had the fish thing, and then we also made onigiri, which is a far cry more successful when you're doing it in the classroom and with a teacher that knows what, you're, what they're doing in comparison to whatever I was trying to do, which did not work at all. We also have that we had plastic wrap and uh, nago. It's fine. Uh, we had actually prepared, not prepared, but we had already pre-prepared um, from you know, store um, seaweed so we got to make the little you know rice balls we we get to I don't have a, a mold or a 
or a demonstration aside from my hands. But you just take a big thing of rice. Technically, you can use water to like keep it from sticking to your hands, but I just use gloves. And you got to like mold it into this little cute little triangle and roll it around or whatever. Stick your finger in it, make a little hole, put your filling in, and we used um, salmon flakes, which was quite delightful, quite tasty. And then just kind of pack it back up and then put seaweed, wrap it in seaweed, and then Bob's your uncle, you've got a, a rice ball. And then we did roll it up with plastic wrap as well, which I didn't do when I tried mine. I also ruined the meat when I tried to do it the first time. I also used fresh and hot rice, which might have been part of my downfall. But I digress. Next time I will try to do it better, a more efficient way. At least the way that I learned next time around. I also realized that I don't like to use, oh, excuse me, little burps. I don't like to use rice cookers. I don't know why. It might be because it's unsettling to see the rice when it's done cooking, but also it feel it doesn't. It cooks differently than I feel that you do it when you have regular, you know, like a, you boil the water yourself and you can control it, whatever. I know it's automatically. I know it's technology. Whatever. Shut up. I like doing it by hand. I don't care if it makes you feel like it's in the dark ages. I like doing it myself because I have control issues. Hopefully not. I hope I'm not going to start unpacking things on YouTube because that's not really where I want to learn. I don't want YouTube to be my therapist. I don't want me to be my therapist. I don't want a therapist. That's better yet. <laughs> uh, where am I going with this? Food, good. Like food. Cooking, fun. Cooking, easy. Cooking alone, traumatic. Not traumatic. Interesting. Moshiroi. Moshiroi. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, or funny, depending on the context. Afterwards, I had lunch with some friends. That was cool. I got to hang out outside of class for like an hour. I didn't actually go to my second period class because we watched a movie in it. It was called Nakayama Nazami. Naz, naka, na, something with an N that wasn't racist. Na, nazima, whatever. I'm not going to get it. It was very, I don't like it. It was kind of like psychological horror, which I'm not great at. And it was a lot of spirals and a lot of kind of like brainwashing, mind control, hoodoo do kind of theme. Which is funky in its own right. And it's the kind of mindless, I'm not saying it turned people into zombies, it affected everybody differently, the way that they kind of like, ooh, spiral this, spiral that. But it was, I don't know how else to explain it other than psychological horror. It was kind of like Japanese, more aggressively rated Coraline. Kind of like an otherness, other world, not other mother, but like other world, other sense of, lots of senses of dread. I didn't watch the whole thing, but, because I'm a wuss. But it was a running theme of spirals, unsettling kind of face types and structures, and it was, I don't know how, to, how else to describe it. Didn't like it, got to write a comment on that, and then I was able to do whatever I wanted for the rest of the day. Friday's class for Japanese was a lot of fun, though, because we got to have people in our class that weren't actually students, but local students who were asked to come in and talk with us. So they didn't speak a lick of English, so that means that we actually got to converse with them in their native language, which is awesome, and also something that we never would have done in a... Level one Japanese class in like the U.S. Not only because of our due to a lack of native Japanese speakers, but also because that usually comes in much later classes. We are on level six already. I have a test tomorrow, finishing up chapter five. That means we're on the last chapter. That means I'm almost done here. There's a lot of there's a lot of railroad thinking here, and that's shocking to me. It really is. I'm. What day is it? It's November twentieth. I have 40 days here. I have less, I have a month and like two weeks. 
that's bizarre. Considering what today I'm going over today's days. I think I'm going up to date like 90 today. What's happening? So that's cool. Then we also have the rest of the day was, oh, we had a competition in that class too. It was, we had to answer everything in Japanese, obviously, but then my ear is itchy. Um, it's cause, probably because there's hair in it. I have too much hair. Can you tell? It's mucho grande. That's not even Japanese. I don't even say that's, that's broken, horribly broken Spanish. Competition. Um, we won because our last point was awful. But the, the first two points that we won were uh, like, what's what were the largest country sizes? And then we guessed, we guessed two out of three right, which was evidently, I believe, America and then China. So Russia's the biggest, not population, just like a surface area. I believe it goes Russia, Canada, America, China. And then we said Australia, but the real answer is Brazil. Now I know that Australia is a continent. However, Australia is also a country inside Australia. I didn't know that for the longest time. But Brazil is actually the fifth largest country. The more you know. Uh, then we did population size. Um, it's not, I think the largest population is China. And then it's like, I don't know, whatever the answer, we got the answer wrong. Third one was memory. Fourth one was how many adjectives can you write and write them correctly. But the last one, which was our cheap shot, was how many students are at Kansai Gata University? The team that guessed before us, um, the, we had three teams. The team that guessed first said 10,500. The team that guessed second said 6,000. And our team said 10,501. There are 11, 000, about 11,600 students. And because we were closer by default, we got the point, which means that we won. A little bit of a cheap shot. Was it awesome? Yes. Would I do it again? 100%. Was I smack talking during the, the, during the competition? 100%. I legitimately said word for word. Someone asked like, oh, hey, what's that? What's that? And kind of like a teasing gesture. Right? I said, it's the difference between success and failure. Moments before we learned the number. Absolute boom moment. Absolute. Absolutely. Awesome. I was riding the high for the rest of the day. <laughs> Such a pointless story, but still fun to, it's fun to recount. Uh, the rest of the day was followed by uh, doing the mind map for my medicine class and not going to it again because I get the same grade whether or not I go or not. Next week is unfortunate because I definitely have to go because there's a movie that I can't sit and watch it here. Because it doesn't post links to stuff, I have to go in person and watch and sit there and cry inside. So that's fun. Saturday, I did a whole lot of nothing. I did go to the store though and I got, I got bread, I got um, chips, I got apples, I got drinks for myself. Just kind of like preparation for not just the, the weekend food, but just food in general. Uh, I have more eggs that I'm going to cook tomorrow. I have milk tea. So I got, I'm got. i doing good. I'm doing good, pretty good on food. I haven't eaten dinner yet, though, but it is only 8 o'clock, so I can do that later. 8. 14. Um, and then today, I have been studying as per book. Uh, I also have been... I just blanked out. I've been doing... What I have been doing is absolutely falling deeper and deeper into the obsession of Norse mythology. God of War Ragnarok came out not too long ago, and I want it. So bad. I want it so bad. There are three weapons inside of it that correlate with nothing that mythology has to do, except for one. It's called... The drop near, and it was Odin's specialty item made for him by the dwarves. In the game, they're called Brock and Sindri, but I don't know if their names are actually Brock and Sindri. Um, but it's the same dwarves that made um, Thor's hammer, Mjolnir. To appease Odin, they made Thor's hammer, they made the ring, they made not the ring, they made the spear, and they made uh, a boat that could fly. 
as well as I'm a liar. They made a ring that when you okay, hold on. I remember the story now. In okay, I don't remember the story. Loki cut off Sif's hair. Sif only really valued her hair. I don't remember if she had kids at the time. But Thor was livid. So he went and threatened Loki's life. Loki was like, all right, cool. I, I'll fix this. Loki went to two dwarves and said, I'm going to do this and this and this. And I hope it's awesome. And then the dwarves made something awesome. And then he took those gifts and brought it to, to other dwarves. And he said, look at all these cool things. I bet you'll never make something as cool as this. And those two dwarves made the hammer drop near, which is a ring that whenever you, the bearer kisses it, it replicates. Um, a, a boat that can be folded up into something. And then um, Sif's magic hair, which reattached and was twice as beautiful as it was. But like they just stuck it to the back of her head and it magically uh, attached itself. That's the myth. And then also when the same thing is Loki turned himself into a horsefly to bug the um, to bug the dwarves. And his bet was if you can make something as fantastic as this, then you can cut off my head. And the way he got out of it was I said you can cut off my head, but not an inch of my neck shall you have. And since you can't cut off the head without, you know, removing the neck, you got to live. Um, that's the story. However, in the game, long story short, in the game, Dropnir is a ring that they mix with s two other things. But it's a ring that can turn into a spear. And then the, r this, the ring's properties of replicating are able to go into the same spear. So you can throw the spear over and over again and then detonate it, which is uh, that's a cool trick. But then, you know, the spear just reconstitutes and it duplicates. I want one. No other purpose aside from it's cool. Again, it's that's not even proper Norse mythology. I just want the ring. Because if you can't tell, you can't see my treasure chest. I don't have a jewelry problem. Oh gosh, you have a jewelry problem. It's... I like shiny things. Evidently enough, I've got a box full of them. Make a mess. Oh, my earrings are in here too. That I don't wear very often because I'm I miss I lose them. But little dangly bits. I don't know why I'm done. See, see, this is not YouTube being the therapist. Stop. No, no, no. no. That's all for today. Thank you so very much for watching this episode of me losing my my mind. Um. I will be back within two to three to four business days, probably not a week, because I have stuff and I'm going to complain to my digital platform and expect everyone to sympathize with me and love me forever. Thanks. Bye. Goodbye.